afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Judy Simpson. In recent years, cancer survivorship rates have been on the rise. More people are surviving cancer than ever before. The trend is the result of several factors, including groundbreaking research, which has led to new or improved treatments. The rise in survivorship is also due to education. Simply put, we now know that nutrition and exercise play a significant role during cancer treatment and recovery. So today we're in the kitchen for a combination of discussion and demonstration. Joining me is Curtis Hem. Curtis is a professional chef and founder of Pink Ribbon Cooking. Welcome, it's so great to see you again. Thank you, thank you for having me. So um, you've been with us before, but maybe some of our viewers aren't familiar with what Pink Ribbon Cooking is all about. So if you can give us a little spiel, that'd be great. Sure, so Pink Ribbon Cooking is a, is a resource for um, anybody that's touched by cancer, whether it's you know, breast cancer or another cancer, it really isn't different. There's a lot of fundamental things that we teach about healthy cooking and our recipes that apply to, you know, even life beyond cancer. If you're diabetic, if you've got heart disease, there's a lot of things that we cover <clears throat> from our food philosophy and how we, how we actually cook our food um, that make it applicable. So for the most part, it's a resource for anybody touched by cancer. Um, like I said, caregiver, um, even kids, um, and, the, and the cancer patient. And what it is, is designed to educate people about the benefits of a healthy diet and a whole foods diet. And we recognize that there was a gap in the services provided in the sense that, you know, if you're going to move to a plant-based diet, which is the basis of the Mediterranean diet, and if you're going to move towards incorporating whole foods into your, um, into your everyday life, a lot of people now don't know how to cook. And so there's what I call the culinary deficiency in America. And mm -hmm. so as my former job as the dean at NECI, uh, New England Culinary Institute, it was very evident to me that there was, there was a progression away from cooking into dining out. And so a lot of people, in terms of the connoisseurship of food, they go out to eat. So we're losing our skill set, you know, in terms of how do we handle things. So if we were to go to the farmer's market, some people navigate that system perfectly, and that choice architecture is fine for them. There are a lot of other people, though, that have grown up on box foods and processed foods, and they have no idea how to even start. Right. What do you do with an acorn squash? Right. So we try to alleviate some of those stressors. Excellent. And so you were recently uh, featured at the annual breast <coughs> cancer conference in Burlington this month. Yeah, and I just, you know, that was a fantastic, that was a fantastic event for us. We had multiple presentations. We did two cooking demonstrations. We were on a panel discussion with Jennifer May, the dietitian from the Cancer Patient Support yep. Program, which is a great resource for anybody touched by cancer. Um, but that was, that was really a great event because the Vermont Cancer Center, the, the host of that, really embraced food. And the, and the conference itself was about getting to the heart of breast health. And there is a strong connection between breast cancer and heart disease. And what they were trying to do is bring those two things together um, so it could be a joint conversation and a continued dialogue. Now I know this firsthand because my wife is an eight-year breast cancer survivor, but she also had cardiac ablation. Mm -hmm. So we understand both sides of this. Right. Um, and in her genetic testing, they were more concerned about her effects from heart disease than they were about a secondary cancer coming through. Excellent. So, so it really does matter. And adopting to uh, a whole foods diet and something that really puts a quality calorie into your consumption mode rather than just a calorie. And so the big thing is, <clears throat> Where do you get recipes? Well, okay, so that's, <laughs> that's what we try to fight. And right. so there's, there's recipes everywhere, and I think that's a, that's a given. Um, and what you have to do is and you have to learn then how to filter. So as an educator by trade, that's, um, that's a, a common thing for me to do is you can filter through. And I could tell from looking at a recipe whether that's a staged recipe or not. Um, and we try to avoid all of those things. Um, we try to produce real photos of real food, um, our recipes, um, and we cut right to the chase. So obviously you can find recipes on Pinterest and Facebook and Twitter and all those things, but at the end of the day, you have to be able to make them, and they have to be real recipes, and that's something that you know we fight a, a stigma against. Health food is not bad tasting. It is not bland. It can be absolutely delicious. And not using <clears throat> a lot of ingredients either. You don't have to go crazy with special sauces or no not at all and, I, and so I have a you know I have a chef hat on today and I have an apron and I have my chef coat on but at home I don't have this on I get laughed at in my kitchen <laughs> if I did so you know I'm cooking in my shorts and boat shoes and, and things like that and we focus on very simple healthy recipes with a small amount of ingredients um, that are budget friendly that are family friendly because that's the other thing that we have to focus on is the whole family the whole family and you don't want to make you don't want to make the person who's having this this food feel like an outsider or feel like they're giving up and so what we focus on is embracing the entire family in the process of, of dining, but also in the cooking. And also, I think that that's the, the only key to success is if everybody's on board with this. You have to. So if you look at, if you look at some of the stressors and the challenges, um, that's, that's a big challenge for a lot of people. If they want to adopt to a change and they're an outsider, well, guess what? If you're always that outsider, it's very hard to, to stay that way. 
you know, unless you, unless you have an antisocial quirk about you, <laughs> it's, not, it's not the best deal. Um, so what we want to do is we want to belong and we want to feel good. And I, I don't put labels on anything. We don't call our food a diet. We call it a food philosophy, and it's a very simple thing. Um, because I believe once you label something, you, you've, you've hindered its acceptance. Right. So... So you've going to do a demonstration for us today. So let's, let's kind of talk about that. Um, you've got some pork, some chicken, garlic, peanuts, cilantro, chive, and some sauce. Yeah. So basically, we have really good, healthy ingredients. So in the garlic, garlic is a really good um, anti-cancer food in terms of it's got some lycopene in it. And there's mm -hmm. also allicin in there. So uh, allicin is something I wrote about. Um, I was driving home one day listening to Elvis Costello. And then I started thinking about garlic. And that was kind of an odd. <laughs> <laughs> an odd pairing, but if you were to look at garlic in and of itself, garlic in and of itself really, um, it, it doesn't do a lot for you, but as soon as you cut it, you smash it, you cut it up, it releases this antioxidant, allicin. Mm. You give it 15 minutes, that's maximum consumption, and if you smash it and you open up more surface area, you break down those cell walls and it's easier for your body to digest that. Oh, okay. So that's one of the things we focus on here. Um, we've got some really good um, calories here. So we've got a lean chicken breast. Um, and this is what our recipe is for. Um, and the benefit of having a lean protein is that your body has to have some fat to kind of metabolize that. Yes. So if you're eating a lean protein and you're not taking in fat with your calories, guess where it comes from, right? Yeah. What you already have in your body. And Beautiful. one of the things I learned at the breast cancer conference was postmenopausal women, the number one source of estrogen in their body is body fat. So body fat is a living tissue and we have to know that and we have to be aware of that. Mm -hmm. um, so. Okay, well, let's get cooking. Sure. <clears throat> so the first thing we have is, I'm going to turn my stove back on here. We're going to do a Thai dish. And so the reason I like Thai food is the fact that Thai incorporates beyond sweet, sour, salty, and bitter. They actually add fresh in the form of herbs and vibrant in the form of citric acid. So what we have here is um, some garlic, and I'll start off with that. And this is, this is my favorite thing. So food should be fun, right? So, <laughs> so we're going to smash it. We're going to smash it, right? So we've had a hard day at work. We don't want to do anything. You know, we're just, we're going to smash this up because the garlic is actually the star of this dish, um, which makes it incredibly budget friendly. And tasty. And tasty. And, and so if you were to do this on a very assertive heat, what you would get is an Italian style flavor because they would go for almost a rapid caramelization. Right. Um, and what we want to do is we want to kind of nurse this out a bit. So I didn't want to do a lot of prep ahead of time. And I wanted to show people that you could do this recipe in, in under 10 minutes. So we've got some garlic there, and it looks like a lot. We'll just do a quick little chop on that. And that is a lot of garlic. I mean, some people would say, whoa, I don't want to do that, right? <laughs> I've got to go to an event. That's and, why you want the whole family right. eating it. Exactly. That way, <laughs> you're definitely, you're not sitting on the front porch by yourself. So I've got a couple tablespoons of a, um, a generic oil, canola, peanut oil. Mm -hmm. Peanut oil is excellent, because we're going to have some peanuts in here as well. Um, and so I've already got my, my pan heated up to about medium. I'm going to take my garlic. And we want to just kind of nurse that along. I'll turn it up a bit. So this is an uh, electric stove. So a lot of people think that every chef cooks with gas. I don't have a gas stove in my home. I have one in my studio. Mm -hmm. um, so they say about control. And my big thing, especially with pink ribbon cooking, is we teach people how to cook. So if you have something and it gets too hot on an electric stove, right? So rather than having to go out and buy you know, an expensive gas stove, take it off, take the, heat. It off the heat, right? <laughs> Put it back on, take it on, so on. Um, and that's how we handle that. So we're going to cook that up, and you can already start to smell the garlic. Yes, you can. Okay. So we're going to let that go. Now our chicken breast. So I've already sliced up some chicken breast, and what we wanted, we wanted some lean, mm -hmm. um, thin slices like this. Now, because there's no intramuscular fat in this, which means that there's no fat running through this, you have to kind of find the grain. And the grain on this chicken actually is like a herringbone pattern, yep. <clears throat> and it goes two ways. So what you do is you cut your chicken breast in half, and then you come in, and you just slice it thinly. And so basically what we've done is we've taken all these strands of protein um, and we've cut them down the middle and we've made them shorter and shorter, which means it's going to be more tender. Okay, okay? that's good to know. I usually just kind of chop away. Now so. again, budget is, is a really big concern for a lot of people. So pork by pound can be a lot cheaper. What you want to do is you want to buy something off the loin or off the uh, shoulder so you have a known amount of fat and you kind of factor that into the dish. Now we do nutritional analysis of all of our um, dishes and we use chicken for that point. Mm -hmm. so, <clears throat> so again, we've got some browning going on. Um, it's not assertive, it's not too, too, too much. Um, and all we do is every once in a while just kind of come through and stir it up. And we want that to take on the sweet notes that, that are um, present in the garlic, and that's from the sugars that are there. 
So once that browns, okay, we're going to add our chicken. I think we've pretty much gotten there. Mm -hmm. Add our chicken. Now this goes quickly. Now you can walk away from this for a bit and come back. We'll finish this dish up within about four minutes. Mm -hmm. It won't be much. Um, and what we can do is we can go ahead and start getting our plate ready because there's really okay. only a few things we have to do uh, to the dish to finish it up. So I use a rice cooker. Um, talented chef, but rice somehow tricks me up. <laughs> so if you, this is just jasmine rice. I love the way that smells. Yeah, it's very aromatic. Um, I try not to use a lot of rice because it's a really um, calorie rich food that mm -hmm. doesn't provide a lot more than energy. And so for me, as a carb addict, right, mm -hmm. um, that's, that's a challenge. Yeah, so that would be hard for me. That would be hard for me to pass up, but I focus on having more of the meats this time. Um, and then if you want to incorporate plants to this, you could do a really great grated carrot salad mm. um, with just some lime juice and some sugar. Yeah. That's a fantastic complement to the Thai food. Again, you're getting that vibrant and that fresh. Maybe add some chives or cilantro to that. So the benefit here too, now you can see we're already half cooked on our chicken and that was less than a minute. We'll turn our heat up because we added some cold ingredients. And the garlic has taken on yet another aroma. <clears throat> it has. It's actually that sweetness is coming through. So what we're going to do now, the chicken's pretty much cooked. I'm going to add just some sugar. And this is, um, this is sugar in the raw. And that actually comes out to be a very small amount of sugar. It looks like a lot, but it's not. Um, that was maybe a tablespoon of sugar, mm -hmm. too. We want that to kind of caramelize. And that's, again, one of the beauties of other cuisines is you get these different flavor notes. And then the last thing we're going to add to this um, on, in the pan, and this will create a steamy effect, which will finish cooking off anything else here, is some fish sauce. Now, if you're on a low sodium diet, I recommend, you know, being judicious with this. If you're not, it provides a really great flavor. Um, and I think it's one of the great essences of, of this dish. And we should mention, it says fish sauce, but that doesn't mean that it's going to taste like cod. No, it's actually fermented anchovies. Um, and so you say you may, you may not like anchovies, but if you're eating Asian food, you've had this before. I mean, right. I guarantee it. It's that flavor. That. Right. And you can smell that. That's, um, that's an incredibly nice. nice smell. So, so far, pretty easy. It is, and I mean, honestly, this is what, six, seven minutes? Yeah, not um, even. I mean, obviously, I sliced the chicken up ahead of time, and you could certainly mix the pork and the chicken together if you wanted That's to. That's not a bad idea. Um, and then what I'll do is I'll throw in just a couple peanuts, and you could chop these up if you wanted to. Um, I like the peanuts because they add crunch, and that's a very, that's a very big factor for somebody. Um, who likes to eat a lot, and you're trying to migrate to this. The other thing I'm gonna do is add some chives to that. Mm -hmm. And so now we've got this beautiful dish, and we'll come over here, we'll just do a quick little plate up. How easy was that? And that serves about four people. And then what we can do is we could put a little squeeze of uh, lime on there. We could put in some cilantro. Um, and that's really the dish. And the benefit of that, a lot of flavor. Again, you want to you wanna have that, that full feeling, add some vegetables, add some more vegetables to this. Mm -hmm. Get a green papaya at the store. Um, they just grate on a grater. Um, really? Yeah, add some carrots in that little carrot salad. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you know, there's a lot of things that we can add to this. That way we're not relying on the rice, right. which is the cheap, empty calorie. It's delicious, trust me, I, right. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> and we're getting the flavor here. Um, but we're also able to, when we focus on, on the types of food and the qualities of the calories, we're able to focus on a better quality chicken mm -hmm. because we're really relying on the flavor of the garlic to be the driving force here and the other ingredients that are with that. And so you've got the chicken that, that satisfies that need to chew. You've got uh, the peanuts, the crunchiness. You've got the flavor from the garlic. Yep. And what we have to be aware of is we have to be aware that there's a psychology to how we eat. Mm -hmm. you know, and that's, and that's something that we just have to pay attention to. It's not going to change overnight. Be patient. No. If people want to <coughs> find out more about Pink Ribbon Cooking or some of your recipes, what should they do? Sure. So this recipe is on our sample recipe page on pinkribboncooking.com. Mm -hmm. um, there's that. We also work closely with a number of organizations in the area. Um, you know, I mean, you can find us in a lot of different places, um, but basically our website. And if you're in treatment too, we've got a, you know, one of my big passions is helping people who are, are newly diagnosed. Um, and we have a free ebook that's out there and that's right on our homepage, right on the front page, mm -hmm. um, pinkribboncooking.com. And that's an absolutely free resource. An easy way to kind of take a few steps toward 
maybe changing the way you eat and see food. Yes, and it is a continuum, and I have to tell people all the time, I mean, I'm in my own weight loss journey, and it's a journey, and I knew it was going to be a number of years for me because I had behaviors that I had to modify, and that's the only way you're gonna make a sustainable change in your life is to modify those behaviors, to deal with the demons of knowing why you eat and, and understanding that, and then making the changes that last. Thank you so much for joining us. You're welcome. It's always great to see you. That's our Thank program you. for today. I'm Judy Simpson. We'll see you again next time on Across the Fence. For a video copy of today's program, call toll-free 1-888-ATF-3430. Across the Fence is brought to you as a public service by University of Vermont Extension and WCAX-TV.